Every culture has created something amazing. Japan got us to love sushi, Greece helped establish democracy, and of course Ireland showed us how to leave social situations? You may have heard of the phrase before, but have you ever wondered why is it called an Irish goodbye? Well, we're here with some answers. It turns out this phrase, and others like it, are weighed down with some old cultural stereotypes. But don't Irish goodbye on us before hitting like and subscribe for more videos like this. An Irish goodbye is when you leave without letting anyone know where you're going. Sometimes it's also called an Irish exit or Irish farewell. This concept has not always been associated with the Irish. Linguists think the earliest version was actually the French leave, which has survived until today as the French exit. It appeared in English writing in the 1700s and was soon adopted by other countries. Not to take the insult lying down, French speakers eventually introduced their own saying, filet à l'anglaise, meaning to leave as the English. Other cultures had their own versions. After the Berlin Wall fell, Germany had einen polnischen Abgang machen, meaning to make a Polish exit. In America, you might also encounter the lesser used Dutch leave. So where do these phrases originate? Well, these variations are an indicator these groups aren't making them up about themselves. Like Canadian bacon, guinea pigs, and French Stewart, someone outside the culture is making this call. These expressions were made up to disparage another country, which isn't particularly surprising. Despite cooperative partnerships like the EU, European countries have long histories of being rivals, conquerors, and the conquered. Centuries of animosity are going to make their way into language in the forms of stereotypes, ethnic jokes, and insults. Going back to our original term, the Irish endured harsh British rule, and the scars of that are still present today in the split between Ireland and Northern Ireland. One possible origin of the Irish goodbye, then, is that it was a way to mock an already subjugated people. After all, the phrase could stem from the outlandish stereotype of Irish drunkenness, and the belief that an Irish person would be too inebriated to bid farewell to anyone. A different tale says that it comes from a single angry woman whose multiple Irish suitors took off without notice. Yet another that it comes from the Irish potato famine, when emigrants would leave the country without a word to skip long goodbyes with their loved ones. The concept of folk etymology can make it hard to nail down definite origins. In fact, some French language experts dispute that to leave us the English was even that popular a phrase. Instead, they say partir comme un volor, leave like a thief, was really more commonly used. So where does that leave us? It's true that phrases that were once offensive can lose that power over time by people losing their marginalized status in a society or by the term simply falling out of use. For example, no Chinese American today would have an issue with being called a celestial, other than maybe confusion. Likewise, saying Irish goodbye probably won't come across as anti-Irish, though you can have your own debate over whether doing it is rude or not. That said, it's good to recognize that sayings which mention a specific ethnicity often come from a place that's, at best, unkind. And there's probably a way to say what you mean without invoking an entire culture. Maybe instead of citing the Irish, start using your own name, like a Thomas goodbye, 